Hi there, I'm Joe Avery, welcome back to Costa Golf Centre. So today we're in the swing studio rather than the putt lab and we're going to be testing a Yonex driver. Um, so I'll just show you, we've got the driver. So we've got the bottom there. You can see we've got graphite shaft and then the sort of top view. You can see they're looking down to the head. Um, so I've got Alex with me today, he's a Yonex tech rep and he's going to talk us through a little bit more about the drivers. Alex, thanks for coming in. No problem, mate. Anytime. Tell us some more. Thanks very much. Cheers. Uh, guys, just running through a few quick points here with our Yonex E-Zone XPG Type HD driver. So first thing with the name, Type HD, that stands for Hydral. So what we've done is we've just moved the uh, centre of gravity a little bit lower and a little bit deeper for a little bit more of a draw, a okay. higher draw, uh, bias ball flight. Yep. That's the main difference between our normal XPG model and a Type HD. Sure. Second bit, counterbalance technology. So what we've done in the XPG model is make the head slightly heavier. That creates greater velocity between cover and ball when you make when you make impact. Okay. The problem is then is you get a really, really head heavy club where that's working a lot faster than your hands. Yeah. So what we've done is we've done this counterbalance technology. We've got 20 grams of tungsten powder in the top of the grip. Yeah. So that acts as like a counterbalance, gives you a little bit more control it, and it feels going on. Right, so you're the only driver company doing that at the moment. Far as I'm aware. Perfect. Um, obviously you've got the Yonex Graphite Shaft, we tend to have a purer Graphite Shaft than other companies. Yep. And your final sort of selling point, if you like, with this driver is that it has got a Graphite Crown on top. Now that Graphite Crown is half as thick as any other Graphite Crown on the market. Okay. The idea with the Graphite Crown on the top is that the lighter and the thinner we can make the top of the cup there, yep. the centre of gravity is a lot lower and a lot deeper than something with a you know, heavier on top. Yeah, sure. So lots of nice selling points. Um, in terms of recommending retail prices, a 289 driver. Yeah, fits in the market really nicely. Definitely, yeah. yeah. Um, and as far as the club goes, like I said, with the with the centre of gravity, that is what we make it for—a deeper, lower centre of gravity. So we might find that it launches a little bit higher and spins a little bit more than some of the drivers on the market. Okay. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah. Your tour players might be looking for that lower launch, lower spin, but for your everyday club golfer, actually, if we see he gets his launch and his spin up a little bit, they'll probably carry it a little bit further. Yeah. Struck, I found that actually the ball was still flying well, you know, it was still coming off nicely. Yeah, um, yeah what, what, do you, what do you think of the numbers? Yeah, I think looking at Joe's numbers, he's you know, he's got a driver that really suits in there. What's really nice from our point of view is that his club head speed is he's averaging 103, but he's within one or two miles every time of that club head speed. He's not jumping up and jumping down. So, from my point of view, that suggests that the shaft's working nicely for him, the counterbalance technology is working really nicely for him as well, and he's they're getting a very consistent impact position. Yeah. How did that feel? Yeah, it, I, I felt really, like it did feel really good. It, it felt to me it was a really inspired confidence. Like when I looked down at it, it's actually a really, it's a pretty looking driver. There's some you put down, looks like a bit of a spaceship. You know, you get the same <laughs> with some patterns. You just think, what is that? But actually looking at this, you know, you, the, the alignment is good. You know, you've just got a little sort of dash there, which which really helps. And then like just a few effects, which you can see there going around the top. And just found actually made the head still look quite compact, even though it is, you know, it's a big head on it. <laughs> Just going back to Joe's numbers again there, his, his average club head speed is at 103 miles an hour and his ball speed is at one, almost 155, so a smash factor of 1.49, we're basically exceeding or almost exceeding what Joe can do with his club head speed, he's basically at his optimum ball speed there, so that driver suggests it, and the numbers suggest that he's coming up as hot as possible. Yeah. Um, his spin rate may be a tiny, too, tiny bit too high at 3000 RPM, but for your average club golfer, like we said earlier, you know, a little bit of extra spin on there, keep the ball up in the air. Yeah, uh, and you probably find that you'll actually carry it a little bit further. So yeah, really good numbers for Jeff. Definitely. So I think one of the last points that I noticed there is I'm a natural drawer of the ball. Um, and with a few of the shots, I noticed on the ball flight, you know, I was definitely getting a right to left movement. On the thing on the third shot, it was a bit extreme, you know, we got a slight hook. Um, but yeah, you know, I naturally draw the ball, um, so I kind of expected that, I guess, from a draw bias. Yeah, I think that's what we'd expect from Joe with that driver, is that, like you said, his natural ball flight is a right to left draw shape. Um, so, you know, that is a draw by a driver, so we would expect Joe to keep turning that over right to left. The driver really is aimed to be a club golfer that struggles with the fade, struggles with the slides, or really wants to try and start drawing it a little bit more. 
to get that right to left gear, we're doing a little bit of extra distance. So quite, a, quite a common thing we see actually, mm. but even when we're doing the fitting, you know, you tend to see a lot of people do struggle losing mm. the right. So now, you know, having a draw bias driver is a really good option to go, mm. but they still then, you know, they, they consistently start to hit straighter rather than consistently getting that left to right shot. <laughs> yeah, I think really, really good driver. Um, very, very impressed with sort of the days for the results. Love, love the look of it as well. I love the feel. So. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, thank you, Alex, for coming down today. Yeah. Really appreciate it. Uh, and thanks, and I'll see you again soon.